Hi, uh, my name is Ken Reed. I'm a vice president here at System Improvements and Taproot, and we're going to be talking a little bit about root cause analysis during equipment troubleshooting. Uh, I know a lot of companies are using instant investigations and root cause analysis during things like uh, injuries and environmental releases and maybe quality incidents. Uh, we're going to concentrate a little bit more on root cause analysis during equipment failures and equipment troubleshooting. Um, I, we always encourage people to think about when you can use a good root cause analysis system. And uh, a lot of people are thinking about those, those people problems, you know, when somebody gets hurt or something like that. But we don't always think about the mechanical problems and, and associate good root cause analysis and human performance with those equipment troubleshooting plans. So we're going to talk a little bit about that right now. So uh, the first thing I'd like to point out is that uh, a lot of times when equipment fails, uh, we almost get the, uh, our immediate reaction is to just blame the equipment or at least just point at the equipment and say, well, it broke. So therefore, I don't need to think any deeper on it. We just need to go fix it. Um, and there's a lot of different examples of those kinds of problems where um, you'll have a, a pump that fails and we'll do some troubleshooting on it and our corrective action will be replace the bearing on the pump and put it back online. Uh, or uh, we'll have uh, a compressor failure and uh, maybe the discharge, uh, uh, the, uh, discharge uh, uh, relief valve has failed on the, on the compressor. And the first thing we do is we replace the discharge uh, relief valve and we dive right back into operations without really thinking about the human problems that were involved with that equipment failure. So uh, <clears throat> it's really, really important to think about how root cause analysis fits in, not just with the repairs, but with the actual troubleshooting piece of your, uh, of your equipment troubleshooting and, and maintenance. So we're gonna take a look about how all that fits together because your, uh, your goal during an, uh, during a, a repair uh, is twofold. It's to get the equipment back up, but it's also to prevent this from happening again. And that, by definition, raises the reliability of our equipment. So all of this has to fit together if we're uh, planning on having a high, uh, more high reliability type pro, uh, 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 company, and we want to make sure our equipment is operating properly. So you can think of an example here. You can see I've got an example of an equipment failure here. And um, in this particular case, uh, we've uh, had a piece of equipment, I, in this uh, case, a condensate pump. It's just pumping pure water. Um, uh, and this pump has been operating uh, uh, for, uh, uh, during an overhaul. We've reinstalled this pump, and we started it up, and we ran it for about 20 hours, and the lower bearing failed on the pump, overheated and failed. So, of course, our answer to that is remove the pump, put a new bearing in the pump, and start it back up again. And uh, during the, uh, the uh, subsequent running, uh, we find that the, the pump fails yet again. So this time we figure, hey, we can't really afford to have this thing break again. It costs a lot of money to have this piece of equipment down. So we are going to get our equipment expert in. All right, we're going to call Joe. And Joe is going to come down, and he is going to troubleshoot and fix this piece of equipment right the first time. So Joe comes down, takes a look at it. Um, figures out uh, all the specs on it, make sure all the measurements are correct, make sure uh, uh, all our clearances are right, make sure the bearing is properly installed. Maybe they put it up on a test stand and they run this thing for a few days and make sure it's going to work properly. Um, Joe is now satisfied. He's, uh, he's confident that the, the system is ready to go. They reinstall the pump and it fails again. So this is a pretty frustrating situation for a company. They've just spent quite a bit of money, not just overhauling the pump the first time, but conducting two sets of repairs on that brand new pump that they just put in. So uh, what we're trying to figure out here is not only do we need to get the system back up and running, we obviously do, but how can we avoid this pro problem happening again in the future? So the problem that we see with these kinds of issues is that companies aren't asking the right questions. In the example we just went through, you can see that they weren't really asking the right questions here. They were asking, how do I get this pump up and running again? They weren't really asking the right questions in this case. So, you know, what failed? That's an important thing to figure out, but it's not necessarily the only question. You know, and management, of course, as they should, are asking questions like, how long is this going to be down and how much is it going to cost? I mean, they have to know these things. That's part of their job. 
Um, and unfortunately, a lot of times, one of our questions is, well, who touched it last? Who broke this thing? Um, while these are okay questions, and, and some of these you need to know, although I don't know if it's really that relevant, who exactly broke this thing, but probably costs and how long it's going to be down, those are good questions. Um, and, and for a lot of equipment failures, that is our normal thinking. That is how we're going to troubleshoot this piece of equipment. Because from the normal troubleshooting uh, process that most people follow, they want to know what happened, and they dive directly into how we're going to fix it. They have not gone through and figured out what happened. We haven't gone through and figured that out. Uh, we are more focused on getting the equipment up and running. And, and don't get me wrong, I understand that. I do understand the importance of getting the equipment up. And a lot of equipment troubleshooting and root cause analysis systems follow this path. They have you brainstorm or think of what could possibly have caused this problem. You find out finally maybe what that problem was, and then your corrective action is go fix it. Um, and that's only a half of the problem. We haven't really delved into the reason why it, why it doesn't work. Uh, you know, Deming had said years ago, you know, if we don't know the right questions to ask, we're not going to figure it out. So we have to make sure we're asking the right questions. Um, again, these uh, standard root cause analysis systems that we see a lot of times, um, they, there's no real methodology involved. They leave it up to the smart troubleshooter or the smart brainstorm person uh, to get together in a room with a bunch of smart people, and we'll just figure it out. And in this case, we know that the bearing failed necessarily on this pump, probably because they rebuilt it wrong. We don't know that, but that's what our brainstorming comes up with. And then we put a corrective action in place, which only involves the repair of what our possible problem was. And in this case, we replace the bearing and blame the craftsman for it, right? So um, what we really need to be doing here is changing our thinking. We need to change the way we're thinking about equipment troubleshooting. We need to be thinking about not just what exactly happened when it failed, uh, but, but how did we get to that point? How did we get to the point where the bearing overheated? Or we, we allowed ourselves to operate a piece of equipment with a bearing that wasn't either improperly installed or with the wrong bearing, or we may find other issues in this particular case. And then the last thing we need to be thinking about here is how do I prevent this in, in the future? I can't afford to have this problem fixed, and then three weeks from now, I have the same exact problem show up again on another pump, or a similar problem occur on this particular pump again. So we need to not just figure out the physical cause and how to fix it, but we need to understand why it broke that way and what we're going to do in the future to prevent this re a recurrence of the issue. Okay, so in Taproot, the first step in any uh, root cause analysis or investigation is to build a snap chart. And what we found is that snap charts are extremely helpful for equipment troubleshooting. Uh, even if you're not going to do a root cause analysis, it is a wonderful troubleshooting tool to help you better understand the problem um, because the snap chart is a visual representation of what uh, the problem was. It helps you picture in your mind exactly what was going on when this failed. So the snap chart is just the first tool that we use in our taproot, uh, and, and we're going to talk about Equifactor a little bit, our, uh, our equipment troubleshooting piece of, the, uh, of root cause analysis. The snap chart, the data we gather, is going to be the basis for the rest of our investigation. So let's take a look at the snap chart. This might be what your snap chart looks like, something very similar to this, where it just gives the data that we know. We have the timeline going across the top. You can just read across those and have a good feel for exactly what we know at this point. Uh, underneath each of those events, each of those squares that we have up there, are the conditions, and that just gives us some additional data, some additional evidence. Um, this does a couple of things for me. Um, first of all, it helps me better understand the problem because I'm writing down every step that occurred. So it gives me a good understanding of the problem. It also allows me to understand and maybe ask better questions because now that I understand all the steps in the problem, I can focus on each of those steps and ask good questions about it. What happened here? What should have happened here? What did the procedure say? 
Was the guy properly trained? How is the system designed to operate in this particular step? All of these kinds of questions help you fill in your snap chart and perform a more robust uh, investigation and data collection. Okay. A third thing that it also helps you do actually for equipment troubleshooting is document your troubleshooting. Uh, you've probably seen troubleshooting uh, processes where somebody is, uh, uh, maybe it's a, a more difficult problem and this is taking you several days or several shifts to do. Um, how many times have you seen somebody duplicate efforts because they did something on the back shift, didn't document it too well, day shift comes in and starts troubleshooting and does exactly the same troubleshooting again for the first three hours. Um, that's because they don't document well. This is a wonderful way to document your troubleshooting efforts to make sure you have a plan and that you have a good, smooth flow of your troubleshooting. Okay? So, we could go to our Equifactor piece of Taproot uh, in this particular case, uh, which, uh, for those not familiar with Equifactor, it's a set of troubleshooting tools that are uh, part of the Taproot system uh, that help you discover what I call the physical cause of the failure. So, why did this bearing failure? Well, I don't know. How would I troubleshoot that? We could go to the Equifactor tables, and it's going to give us a list of the most probable causes for that particular failure. So you don't have to figure this out on your own. You don't have to have some expert come into your, uh, to your, uh, your brainstorming session and, uh, and hopefully know exactly what the problem was. Um, you can go and do troubleshooting on your own, but when you get stuck, these Equifactor tables will point you to areas you wouldn't have thought of on your own. So these tables are pretty powerful. Uh, Heinz Block uh, was the developer of most of these tables. Um, and if you're not familiar with him, I encourage you to go look him up. He's uh, uh, well known in the equipment reliability and especially the maintenance reliability and um, lubrication areas of uh, especially the oil and gas industry. So, so take a look and go look at Heinz Block and the, and the wonderful work he's done over the years. And we have access uh, to, Heinz's, uh, to Heinz's knowledge uh, with the troubleshooting tables built into the Taproot system. Okay? So what has this done for me so far? We started with what happened. This is where we're at with our troubleshooting sequence here. We now have a way of gathering data about what happened. We can ask the right questions in this case. We can figure out exactly what was going on. We know where to narrow down our troubleshooting at this point. Again, I don't need some bearing guru. I don't have to hire Heinz to come in and, and work with us and try to figure out what the bearing failure uh, uh, cause was. We have access to that knowledge, that expert knowledge, okay? Not only can I ask the right questions, but because I can ask these questions up front, I can now make sure I'm asking these questions at the right time. I can now make sure that I'm not accidentally um, altering my evidence. Uh, for example, if, if one of the possible problems could be a misalignment between the pump and the motor, Right? It could be a misalignment there. Well, if I accidentally, or during my troubleshooting, if I disconnect the, that flange or that coupling, I've just lost that data. I, I can't check alignment anymore because I've already, I've already uh, disconnected the flange. So uh, by, by making sure I understand all of the questions I'm going to ask during my troubleshooting, I can properly time my troubleshooting. I can go look at my data, gather the data at the right time. I might go and look at... Uh, 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 motor currents or, or electrical problems before I disassemble this thing. And then I can check alignment, and then I can go and disassemble this thing and go take a look internals of the pump. So I can sequence my troubleshooting in the way, right way by ensuring that I follow that snap chart, that I gather everything in the right order. Okay. Again, those uh, Equifactor tables can be extremely helpful uh, on, on gathering this data, and we have a whole set of tables that are built into your system. And by the way, if you decide that you have a special piece of equipment that's not covered in our tables, you can go build your own tables. It's fully customizable set of tables that you can go in and build on your own. So it's a, it's a really nice setup for you to do equipment troubleshooting. So after we've done some of this, our snap chart might look more like this. It now has a lot more information here that we've gathered to understand, well, when Shipyard replaced the piping at the same time they were overhauling the pumps, they didn't install the piping correctly. So the piping is, was off-center. Instead of the pipe being right here, the pipe was over here. And when they put the pump in, they just pulled the pipe into place, and then when they hooked it up, 
it ended up twisting the pump casing as they released the tension on the, on the pipe. So the pump casing was twisted and it caused the bearing to be pinched and overheat. <clears throat> These are the things that we found using the Equifactor tables and also going out and interviewing and understanding the exact problem. Now, we could stop here. We could say, put a new bearing in the pump, cut out all that piping and put it in the right place. Maybe if we're, uh, <laughs> we're really uh, worried about it, we can go yell at those pipe fitters and say, hey, why'd you guys put the pipe in the wrong way? Don't do it again. We'll train them to do better next time. Um, obviously, this isn't gonna be very helpful. Uh, we haven't really gotten into the point where we can understand why did we have this problem. We haven't done that yet. We fixed the physical cause. We replaced the piping. We put a new bearing in the pump. But how do I know this isn't going to happen on the ship next door when they rip that condensate piping out? How do I know we don't have the same exact problem again? That is where the root cause analysis comes in. And this is where the human performance troubleshooting uh, piece of taproot comes in. While this seemed like an equipment failure, it was actually a human performance failure. We had humans making mistakes, which is 90% of your equipment failures are humans doing something they're not supposed to do. Doesn't mean I wanna blame humans. I'm just recognizing humans make mistakes. That's what we do, we're humans. Um, that doesn't mean we have to accept that. That doesn't mean we have to go yell at people. That means that we as a company have to put things in place to prevent the humans from making those same mistakes again in the future. And that is what the root cause uh, analysis does for us in the root cause tree, allows us to work our way down through the root cause analysis, do, do a full root cause analysis on this, ask good troubleshooting questions about the humans in this case instead of about the equipment, understanding why the humans made the mistake, get to the back of our root cause tree, and this is gonna start talking about you know, the, what, what in the training of our people caused this issue. What in our communications? Did we not properly communicate with each other here? Did I not have a supervisor there in work directions? Was a supervisor not available? All of these are things that we as a company have control over and we can do better in the future so that our employees can do a better job. They have all the tools they need to do better next time. Okay? All right. Um, I'm not gonna get too deep into the mechanics of the root cause tree at this point. I don't think that's necessary. Um, however, what we have found is that no longer are we just going to say, yep, the problem was a bad bearing and bad mechanics. They weren't trained properly. So what we're gonna do is make sure that mechanics know better next time and don't make this mistake. Sounds wonderful, it doesn't work that way. Uh, these mechanics did not come into work that day and say, I think I'm gonna break a pump. That's not what they did. Um, instead, they came in planning on doing a good job and made a mistake. So our job is now to make sure we find the actual fixable root causes of the problem and then apply root cause analysis and corrective actions uh, to prevent this from happening in the future. You can use Taproot for a lot of different things. This, uh, we concentrated today on equipment troubleshooting, uh, equipment failures. But just keep in mind, you can use it for pretty much anything. You know, why did this, this, uh, uh, this project go over budget? You can use Taproot to figure that out. Uh, why did uh, somebody break into our warehouse and steal our stuff? What did we allow, how did we allow that to happen as a company? These are all things that Taproot can be used to help you look at the human performance problems uh, of, of issues that are all, all across your company. Again, today we uh, concentrate on equipment failures. You can take a look at just about any, any problems with Taproot. Well, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, this is a, uh, I hope this was helpful for you to understand a little bit about how Taproot would be used for equipment troubleshooting, uh, maybe broaden your perspective a little bit about what an equipment failure really means and how the humans are interrelated with that. Um, if you have any questions about using Taproot or Equ Equifactor, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. I am uh, available on like a thousand different social media areas and uh, uh, you can see, us, see me at, at training sessions. Um, if you want to learn more about this, you can go to uh, some of our courses. We have an Equifactor course uh, at, at uh, both public courses. We can come to your site. Uh, you can come to our summit and we can talk about it there. All kinds of opportunities. So uh, please uh, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm happy to help you with this. And uh, I look forward to seeing you sometime in a Taproot course. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.